Got to turn the mic on. Hello, everyone. Sorry, you caught me trying to clean my mess up off my desk. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. <laughs> Come on in, relax, grab a beverage. We're going to do some fun creating tonight. Um, we've been doing a series of fun fold cards. And uh, tonight we have a card that um, I've been calling the wrong name. <laughs> So I'm sorry about that. Um, I, uh, one of my team members um, who uh, has been a longtime customer too, um, mentioned that she made the card because she had the project sheet back from when we did it a few years ago. <laughs> so I did a little sleuthing and I found it. It's actually called, at least what I called it previously, was the Spanner Panel Funfold Card. Um, I mistakenly was calling it the bridge card because there is kind of a bridge across. But what I have in my past project sheets that we've done before, in fact, we did it for a demos galore, um, the bridge fold is a little bit a different fold. We can do that. Um, sometimes. We did it one not that long ago. So this one is the spanner panel card. So my apologies for the little mix up there in the... Um, explanation. Um, we'll, I'll be doing project sheets for all of these um, fun folds that we've been doing. And so if you haven't subscribed yet to my uh, project sheet emails, you can go to suestampfield.com. Um, I might try to move that up to do one a week and just limit it to one spread it out a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we go. But thank you for all your kind words on and how appreciative you are. I get like the last one I sent out last week and I got, I don't know, like 10 thank you emails. So you're so kind. Thank you for doing that. Um, it does. I do put a lot of time and effort into those tutorials to make sure that they're uh, those emails, that they are full of value for you. And so I really appreciate your um, kind comments um, when you um, respond. So thank you. So we're going to go ahead, um, kind of flying by the seat of my pants, because that's how, how we go. Uh, we create these cards together. Um, I do have a game plan here. <laughs> I had a number, I had a hard time deciding which pro products to use tonight. There's so many options, right? So many options. Um, so, oh, thank you, Susan. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the, the project sheets. Um, the other thing uh, that I know Susan has uh, uh enjoyed uh, participating in is the crafter noon that's my monthly class if you place a 50 dollars order here in february in march you're going to get a packet in the mail from from me for a unique fun fold card that we'll do together and then i'll show you um four other ways to decorate that fun fold card and you'll get a full tutorial bundle for all of the cards so i'm um, going to go ahead and um looks like a couple people are having sound issues let me just double check that we're all good um uh, sound is fine there. Okay, good. It might be on your end. So good. Glad to hear that some of you are okay sound wise. Um, those of you that are having issues, maybe if you catch the replay, the sound will be uh, be corrected. All right, let's get this party started. So uh, yay, Kathy's checking me, catch me live. Awesome. So glad that you're here hanging out with me. Um, I frequently lose stuff. I'm just going to put it right out there, guys. Uh, are you like me? And you go to craft and you're making stuff and you're making a big mess. And then all of a sudden you go to find your adhesive and it's nowhere to be found. You just had it in your hand like two seconds ago and it disappears. This happens to me quite frequently. So one of my viewers, um, Janine, uh, made a little game for us. So when I lose something uh, and then I find it again, I always say found it and we all take a sip of our beverage. So let me know what is in your cup. I have no cup tonight. <laughs> my my water bottle is downstairs. What the heck? Um, and I'm not going to be drinking the Stampin' Mist because, man, that's some serious alcohol right there. So you guys are going to have to take a drink for me. Oh, good. I'm not the only one that loses stuff, right? Yeah. But you know what? It, doing It can be frustrating, but when you make a game out of it, then it's not so frustrating, right? We can all laugh at ourselves. So Susan's got her zero Gatorade. Woohoo! All right. So let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to flip to my messy desk. <laughs> I think I've shoved every, oh, no, see stuff's leaking in. Stuff's squeaking in. I think I've shoved most of the junk out of, <laughs> not junk. It's good stuff. It's not junk, but it's not what we need to create tonight. So 
let's get our party going here. Where is my, let's start with some cardstock because that is always a great place to start, right? I'm going to grab, I'm not 100% sure why, but for some reason, I'm going to grab thick, thick basic white tonight. And we are going to make this card from the get-go, which means we need a paper trimmer. So we are making this panel card. Susan, show them what we're making. Oh, yes. Okay. So our fun fold card we're making tonight is this one that was inspired by my team member, Sandy Stellenberg. She made this card for a swap. This is like a three-way fun fold card. Looks like kind of super fancy, um, and it's so easy, you guys. It's so easy. <laughs> so when you open this spot right here, then you've got this other part that opens here, and you've got your inside message. So we call it a three-way because it's one, two, three, right? But in actuality, it is just a folded over card with a little a little uh, piece added across here. This is where I got confused and was calling it a bridge fold card, but technically it's called a spanner panel because this panel spans the distance between these two side pieces. So uh, shout out to my moderator. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer Walsh is in the comments here. She's uh, showing us what page number that thick uh, white and thick vanilla are because, oh my gosh, it's not easy to find in the catalog. It's a little bit hidden, but, um, and I'm jiggling the camera. Okay. Got to be really careful how high I raise it up so I don't show you all my mess, you guys. Oh my goodness. So I have a little bit of an advantage because I have a project sheet for this one, which is why it's going to make it super easy to recreate the project sheet for this one. Um, so we did, Jennifer, do you remember this? We did this card uh, probably in Stamp Club back in 2020. Um, it was called the uh, Spanner Panel Card. We did it with the uh, uh, Merci uh, uh, stamp set and designer paper. These are all retired products. Uh, but we did it with, uh, so Sandy did a piece of white cardstock with some designer paper on it, which is super cute. Another way to do this card is with um, a window sheet across there. So that word Mercy is on a window sheet and when it flips up, um, you can kind of see the back side of the word and then it opened up like that. So that is another option. Now this is, um, this can be found on my blog. Mm. Where was that, Susan? Well, that's a really good question. Um, uh, March 9th of 2020 is when I posted this to my blog. And uh, you can actually print this project sheet right out from there. Now, I will update this project sheet with the way we're doing it tonight. So instead of using, uh, uh, Sandy used the Country Floral Bouquet uh, products. Um, now, when I do this tonight, Jennifer will drop um, the... There we go. Jennifer will drop the measurements in the comments. And at the very end, I've typed up a little banner that I'll put across the bottom that has all of the dimensions. So um, Jennifer Walsh, thanks for the moment. With shit. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, she um, somebody asked in the last video about which sets were available in two ways in the mini catalog. Some of the sets are available in both photopolymer and um, the cling mount. All right, so we're going to start making our spanner panel card here. I have my thick basic white in my paper trimmer. I have the, it's eight and a half by 11. I have the edge lined up at five and a half. And oops, and I just managed to pop out my blade. Okay, and <laughs> I'm going to cut it in half, as you might imagine. And um, like we do, I'm going to go ahead and score it at four and a quarter. So the light gray one in your paper trimmer is the scoring blade. The dark gray is the cutting blade. All right. So I don't know if, where is my, oh, my light's not on. Mm. Oh, goodness. Well, that should be a little brighter for you. So sorry about that. So can you see if I tilt it, you can just write, I think you can make out that score line. That score line is pretty critical. Um, that is going to be our guide today uh, when we cut our paper. So I'm going to lay this back into my paper trimmer and I'm going to line up the left edge of my card at the one and one fourth inch mark. So one and a quarter inches. So my eight and a half uh, by four and a quarter inch piece. Is that right? No, Susan, five and a half by eight and a half. Oh my goodness. Um, 
uh, is laid in here and we're going to go ahead and cut on this. So, um, okay, that's a problem because I want to cut, well, I guess I could cut from the top down, but I think it's going to be easier on my brain if I cut from the bottom up. So I'm going to lift this up, slide my cutter down here because I only want to cut part of my card base here. So I'm lining up the left edge with the one and a quarter mark. I'm going to slide my cutting blade up just until I get to that score line. I'm going to, um, let's see if I can zoom in here, guys. I don't know if you can see that. So the uh, edge of the blade, let's see if I can tilt it. You see that little groove on the right edge of the blade? I want to line up that groove with the score line. It looks to me like I'm a little short, so I'm going to go a little farther. And now I can see I also can line it up with the uh, measuring guide. That score line is at four and a quarter. So if I line up this little groove right here with the four and a quarter mark, that's going to be the right place to stop. Now, if you go a little too far and you cut past the score line, eh, no worries. Yeah, no one's ever going to see it, right? So I'm going to shrink back out here a little bit. And I'm going to slide this side in. Um, no, I'm not. Okay, so we cut it one and a quarter. Now we're going to slide all the way over to, hang on, I got to look at my cheat sheet. I don't want to do it wrong. That would be super embarrassing. That's page one, that's page two. Hang on. Okay, there we go. I'll just throw this on the floor. No, no worries. All right, we're going to slide it over to the four and a quarter inch mark right here. So now I have my left edge lined up at the four and a quarter inch mark. I'm going to put my blade back in here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide it up until I get to that score line, which is also the four and a quarter inch mark. So I can either stop when I see the score line or I can stop when I am um, lined up with that four and a quarter inch mark. Lift it up here and see how I did. Oh, come on, camera, focus. Why are you not focusing? There we go. Now it's focusing. All right, I'm going to go just a tiny bit farther. All right, and then lift that up. All right. So all we did there is, is that blurry for anyone else? Super blurry for me. Okay, there we go. Now we're, it locked somehow. All right, so now you should be able to see that better. I'm going to slide back out here. So now we have our card base scored in the center like we normally do, but we have these two pieces here and the center panel. The, that's going to make the side piece and that center piece. So it's all one card, just like we normally do. Just by making those two extra cuts, it, it makes it super fancy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fold on that score line. You actually could do that folding before you do any of this. Totally up to you. Sometimes it makes that score line easier to see if you crease it ahead of time. And uh, okay, there we go. And that is our card base. Now we have this bridge portion that we're going to do across. And you want to put that bridge portion on first because you want to hide the ends of that under your designer paper panels that you're going to put on the side. For this version, we're going to use window sheets because we can. So you can see here what it looks like if you use white uh, cardstock with designer paper on it. I'm going to use a one inch by four inch piece of window sheet. Now, I don't want any adhesive in the middle of this. I only want the adhesive on the outside edges because um, it would show <laughs> if I did it in the middle. Um, I am hopefully going to attach it with tear and tape. Aha! found it. It was way across the desk and not in the drawer where it belongs, but I did find it. So uh, take a sip for me, everyone, because I don't even have my beverage tonight. What the heck? No beverage for Susan. So sad. <laughs> so this is a one by four inch piece of window plastic, and I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape way out on the end, like as close to the edge as I can get it. 
and I'm going to put one way out at this end. Why am I using tear and tape? Uh, because this is actually a piece of plastic. This window sheet is a piece of stiff plastic, and um, I don't want it to fall off. So I'm going to go with a stronger adhesive, uh, which is what tear and tape is. All right. If I had a, mm, where is my take your pick tool, Susan? Oh, my goodness, you guys. All right. Well, I'm going to use this one. Found it. <laughs> This one has the die brush attachment. That's okay. I just need the pokey end and it has that too. So um, the, the take your pick tool just really helps make it easier for me to get that backing off of the uh, tear and tape. Let's go ahead. Oh, Jennifer has the page number for window sheets because, oh my gosh, you guys, they're clear. So they're really hard to find in the catalog because it's not like something that can easily be pictured. Thank you so much, Jennifer. That is super helpful. So it's on page 140 in the catalog. Jennifer has her catalog at hand and she's uh, ready to look stuff up for us. Thank you so much, Jennifer. So I'm going to put this one by four inch piece of designer of, <laughs> of window sheet across my card right here and stick that down, All right? So I kind of have it centered somewhat. I got uh, red ink. I must have red ink on my hands already. Mm, goodness, but that's okay. It's not going to show. We're going to cover it up. All right. So now let's, now's the fun part. Now we're going to decorate our card. All right. So we're going to use tonight um, a suite of products called, mm, mm, mm. did I pull it out? Seriously, you guys, I could lose anything given half a chance. Oh my heavens. All right. I've got the dies here. I've got the embossing folder here. I've got the designer paper here. Oh, it's right here. It's on my shelf. Found it. <laughs> Here's the stamp set. We are using the Playing in the Rain stamp set tonight. And it is so adorable. We're also using the Playing in the Rain dies. These dies are so fun. So I love the kite die. The kite die would be awesome on this card. Um, this took me a while to figure out what that is. That's also part of the kite so that you can have your kite be multiple colors. So let's say you would cut your kite, um, your main kite you would cut in blue and then you would cut this one in, well, it's supposed to be upside down. Um, you would cut this one in uh, like pink or something and that would be the the opposite colors of the kite. I'm not saying that very well, but that, and then these are the tails on the kite. So uh, these just cut the little, um, uh, so your kite can be two colors. All right, this also cut the designer paper. So there's two whole sheets of these cute critters. Um, you can cut the fox, the turtle, and the bunny. The bunny comes in multiple colors. There's a white bunny, there's the yellow, uh, yellow bunny and then the, um, this one that's kind of the brown bunny. So um, you can cut those out. They also um, come as stamps. Um, there's also a bunch of other um, shapes and things in here that you can cut, some butterflies, uh, clouds, all sorts of fun things. So let's, um, let's cut out. We're going to just uh, grab this fox here. Um, we're going to put a little fox with a cute pink umbrella on our card. And I don't know if you can tell that it's embossed. So it's shiny. <laughs> so fun. Um, all right. So, okay. I'm just looking to see if there were any urgent comments. Jennifer, if I'm missing something, just please tag me and I will hopefully see it. All right. So I'm just rough cutting around this guy because I want to cut out just him. And I want to save these for another one. Oh, I love the bunny, you guys. The bunny is so cute. I'm currently working on the January Crafter Noon tutorial bundle. I am working on it so hard, you guys. Um, making progress. Not done yet, but making progress. So uh, Rain or Shine is Sweet is on page 50 of the mini catalog. And this is just a really fun one to send. Well, really anytime, but especially in the spring when it gets rainy. And someday it'll be spring, you guys. Someday. Um, it was actually pretty warm in Minnesota today. I uh, went for a walk with the dogs and it was 26 degrees out. And that's pretty dang good. All right. So we've got our fox to cut out. I also have some designer paper from that pack, the same pack. Uh, this one. Oh, 
think it's this one right here that I cut. This one has um, some parts of the paper have a lot of raindrops, some have less. I happen to have a, a piece that was the sizes I needed, so that's what I used. So I happen to grab the one that has less raindrops on it. I'm going to go ahead and attach those. I'm going to hide that comment so it's not covering it up. Yeah, can you see that shiny coating on there that has the fun, um, the fun reflection? Oh, it's 40 in Bismarck, North Dakota. Woohoo! Yeah, mom said it was uh, like 50 down at the, the Christmas tree farm today in southern Iowa. So wow, that's awesome. Uh, it's supposed to be even warmer here, I think, tomorrow. So I'm making a big fat mess here. I'm putting some adhesive on this. Um, oh, look, I have a dog here on my window sheet. Mm, yeah, that's how we roll around here. So this uh, piece of designer series paper is one by four, as is this piece right here, one by four. And I'm just going to go ahead and put those on the side panels here. All right, so that part is gonna lift up. And then uh, a little bit different than what Sandy did. Sandy had embossing, well, uh, okay, you know what? I'm not sure, I'm gonna ask you all. So um, for this piece right here, should we do another piece of the designer paper, which is kind of what I was thinking, the same pattern of designer series paper, or should we emboss a piece of basic white with this uh, embossing folder, raindrops. Haven't even opened it yet. I'll have to crack it open, but I totally could do that. Totally, totally can crack it open. I'm crackling it right now. I'm probably crackling it in your ear. Sorry about that. Um, so, oh, K Colleen had a really good tip. The, um, let's see, where'd it go? It went, slid up on me. Um, the clouds in here, she was saying, would make super cute popcorn. If you need to make a popcorn card, you could stamp these and die cut them. Oh, what a fun idea. If you were doing a, like a gift card to a movie theater or something, awesome idea. Thank you so much, Colleen, for sharing that. Um, so let me know if you want me to emboss or if you want me to designer series paper. Oh, uh, let's see. Window sheet, emboss, DSP. Use the DSP, emboss. Gosh, you guys. It's pretty tight. Mm, man, that's that's a tough call. I think I see a few more. You know what? Let's emboss a piece. We'll hold it up and we'll see what we think. How about that? How about that? Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to sneeze. No, I can't sneeze. No sneezing. <laughs> All right. Hang on here. I got to move my mess. Um, so we can't emboss it unless we have a piece of cardstock to do that on, correct? So I'm going to grab my <clears throat> measurements that I threw on the floor and remind myself the size of that piece. It's two and three quarters by four. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, things are falling. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. <gasps> it's chaos over here. What the heck? It's like craziness. All right. So two and three quarters by four is the size of piece that I want to layer on the front of my card. So we can either do designer series paper or we can do embossing. So somebody, a couple of people said emboss the DSP. That's kind of an interesting idea. Like you could add extra raindrops to the raindrops kind of a fun idea. All right, what do you guys think? So we could emboss the DSP. And it's already embossed with shiny stuff, so like be double embossing it. Mm, so many choices. All right, hang on here. I'm going to just slide things out of the way. Let's bring in our big machine here because this is a big embossing folder. So... <laughs> See if I can get it on to my deal here. So water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Right, Janine? I totally forgot my water. Oh, my goodness. So, all uh, right. So <laughs> is that my best quote of the day, Jennifer? No, I can't sneeze. I mean, gross. That would be so gross. All right. All right. So here we go. Let's put this right here. All right. Mmm, missing, missing my top plate. 
Hang on. Hold on. Got to go across the room. Found it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. I found it. All right. So, Bost Vellum. And Bost Vellum, that's an interesting idea, too. But then I got to figure out how to stick it down. So, um, let's try embossing this DSP. Uh, several of you mentioned that idea, and that's just really kind of fun. I'm all for fun, right? We need more fun in our lives. Okay, but I'm right-handed and my machine is flipped around for a left-handed person. I love my left-handed people, but that is not me. So I got to flip it around here and send it through. Love that the machine can go either way. All right. Well, let's see what happened. <gasps> so exciting. The big reveal. The big reveal. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I hope I did it the right way. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, should we use it? I think we should use it. But just for fun, let's see what this one would have looked like. The white. We got stuff static clinging. Oh, my goodness. Chaos reigns here at Sue Stampfield Studio. <laughs> it's a pretty fancy name for this mess I got going here, I got to tell you. All right, I'm going to set you aside. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's really sweet, too. Oh, my goodness. Lots of good choices. We like that, right? Always lots of good choices. So here's what this looks like. A little extra texture there on the center. You could have embossed. I could have embossed all of them, right? Or if you wanted the center panel to pop out, uh, differentiate from the sides, you can go with the white. I don't think there's a wrong answer here. Um, it all looks pretty good to me. So let's grab our little fox here and let's die cut our fox. Um, to die cut our fox, I'm just going to grab the mini machine. This is a limited edition Boho Blue mini machine. Boho Blue is going to be a new in color coming out in the new catalog in May. How exciting is that? Uh, demonstrators always get to pre-order from the new catalogs early. Um, in fact, if you wanted to give it a try to become a demonstrator, you could uh, sign up right now and you could get this cute little machine. So if you join right now for $129, you get to pick $175 in product of your choice and get this, uh, this machine, or you can get it in white. If you don't like blue, that's totally fine. Or if you don't want the machine, you actually can join, uh, spend $99 and get $175 of product of your choice, like this whole suite right here. So I've got my die. I've got my little fox from the paper. And again, this is the, um, is it, what's it called again? So the stamp, the bundle, the dies I'm using are called Playing in the Rain. But the suite is called, oh, Jennifer, remind me, what's it called? You just had it. I had it up on the screen. Is it rain or shine? I want to say rain or shine. I think rain or shine. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's put our top plate on. Now, if you have the mini machines, either the white or the blue, um, sometimes when they're shipped, some of them are very tight. And if you have trouble getting the plates to go through, it might just mean that your machine is extra, extra snug. And so you can switch out instead of using the number one plate, you can use the number three plate that comes with the machine. It's meant for embossing folders, but it's a little bit thinner than the, um, than the white one. And for some people, that is a, a good solution. So I like to stagger my plates. So I'm going to uh, have this one extending way out over the other ones so that the roller can grab it and send it through easier. Did that just move on me? Mm -hmm. I think it did. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It shifted. I didn't use my post-it note, you guys. What is wrong with me tonight? I'm in a hurry to make this cute card. But sometimes when we do things in a hurry, that's when I make a mistake, right? So I'm going to grab a post-it note and just adhere this down. Now the plates for your mini and the plates for your big machine are a consumable item. You will need to replace them. Um, and you do want to flip them every time. If you flip them every time, they'll get less curved and uh, they'll last you longer. But they are 
meant to be a consumable item, which means you just need to, um, you'll have to replace them at some point. So mine get a lot of use. <laughs> so especially my big ones, especially when I'm die cutting for our craft monthly craft renewal and uh, going through a gazillion different die cuts because I like a lot of die cuts. I like a lot of fun things on the cards. So, um, so yeah, I tend to go through a lot. All right, I'm going to close this little guy up. We might use it again, but it's right here if I need to grab it. I, I use both machines. I love having this little mini one right here at my stamp desk. My bigger one has to live across the room because it takes up too much space. So for little things, it's just super handy to have this one right at my fingertips. Oh, we are going to use it again. All right. So we've got our little fox. Um, so here's what he looks like with that fun embossed paper. And that is just super cute. Now we've got this, um, this panel here. And so here's what I was thinking we could put on the panel. In the set, there is a bridge. So I thought we could put the bridge across, spanning across our, um, our adhesive uh, blah, 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 window sheet. That's the word I want. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick this down. I'm going to wait on my little fox until I see where the bridge is going to be. And then we'll place it and it'll look like our fox is walking across the bridge. And then when you lift up the bridge, you'll see the fox, see inside here. All right. So now what Sandy did, when you use a cardstock piece across here, you do get some advantages for doing that because then you can do a hidden message underneath. How fun is that? Just one to say. So, so that is, you know, you can't do that with um, the window sheet. So different options, right? Different choices. So um, I know that bridge die cut is like, it was like it was meant for this card, right? It's like perfect. So perfect. All right, so I'm gonna die cut that. So let's grab our paper trimmer. Let's cut a piece of paper. Let's just take our die and see what size paper we need. I'm gonna say one and a half inch would be good by, ooh, let's see, oh, I like a little extra. So it's about three inches long. I'm gonna go, oh, let's go one and a half by four. How about that? Let's just do that. One and a half inches here by four. We'll give me plenty to work with. By four. Now you can put um, adhesive sheet on the back of this because this is a really skinny thing. I'm going to be a little lazy here and um, just do uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. Why not? All right, let's bring our little guy right back in here. Now, when you, uh, if you decide to take advantage of being a demonstrator, you get all the demonstrator perks like ordering stuff early. So when the new a mini catalog comes out right now, demonstrators can actually add some brand new products that will be introduced in March into their starter kit. So if you would like to see those brand new products, if you're interested in getting a starter kit and you want to see what you can add that isn't in any publication right now, uh, send me an email, susan at suestampfield.com. I can answer any questions you have and I can uh, let you know what, uh, what is available. So I'm staggering my plates here and there we go. We're sending our little bridge through. Wee! <laughs> You got sound effects and everything tonight. Oh my goodness. I'm not drinking wine, I swear, but you know, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> All right, it is Saturday night, right? It is Saturday night. I could totally be drinking wine. That's what I should be doing. Okay. There is our bridge. So cute, right? So cute. All right. All right, got this. I got a mess here, but that's okay. We'll just throw it up here. <laughs> I'll, I'll clean that up later. It's probably some really cute thing you could do with these little squares, but mm, I got nothing. I got nothing right now, but you never know. All right, so we're going to glue on. I haven't attached our little fox here. We're going to put him aside. Now we're going to attach our little bridge here. So, so our spanner panel card is kind of a bridge fold card because it's got a bridge on it. <laughs> I am adding just a little bit of uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. It's supposed to be a little bit. I'm getting kind of a lot of bit here. A lot of bit. That's not really a word, Susan. Mm -hmm. No, it's really not. 
It is now, right? All right. I'm um, going back over my adhesive and kind of just um, spreading it out a little bit because I got a little carried away. I've got a pretty good sized blob over here. Um, sometimes I get uh, a little carried away with the liquid glue. Uh, I think the saying that goes with it is um, a lake is a mistake. A uh, dot is a lot and a thin line is just fine. Um, I don't always... <laughs> Uh, I don't always follow that rule. So hang on. Hold on. Hold the phone. I'm just grabbing a little scrap of cardstock here. And I'm just going to scoop up some of my excess craziness here with the glue. You can also kind of be spreading it out a little bit. I just don't really want it oozing past the bridge when I stick it on. I don't want any ooze. Does that make sense? Okay. No, it's stuck to me, so... All right, so we're going to stick our bridge on here, right there. I got a little adhesive here at the top that I don't want. So, <clears throat> oops, dropping things here. Um, the bridge, if you're going to do this card, be aware the bridge goes up above your window sheet, or you can make your window sheet a little wider so that it doesn't. Um, so you want to make sure you don't have any adhesive on the very top uh, edge of the bridge or it might get stuck closed. For, fortunately, I've got a piece of paper towel here and I'm just uh, rubbing off of that adhesive. All right, so there we have our little bridge. Let's bring our little fox in and we're just going to tuck our fox. So he's just, he's just walking along that bridge right there just like that. So let's put some adhesive on the back of the fox. Um, I'm not going to do dimensionals. I'm not going to pop him up here uh, because one of them fo following the yellow brick road. Oh, the offcuts in the bridge that could be a cobblestone path. Oh, you guys are so clever. Such clever people. Such a good idea, Nicole. Okay, and we're just going to pop that on right there. So now we've got our little guy walking across the bridge and then you open up and you see him. Now he's like floating down like a, <laughs> like Mary Poppins <laughs> with his umbrella. All right, now we're going to add a couple of designer series papers, panels, designer, oh boy. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? I clearly cannot speak tonight. Um, I'm going to use this pattern. This is another pattern from the pack that is just a whole bunch of umbrellas. And so I'm going to pop those in here. Now, normally on this card, you would do a four by five and a quarter inch white panel on the inside if you're using colored cardstock. I'm not, so I don't need to do that. I'm just keeping it, keeping it super simple tonight, right? All right, let's take this. I flipped that paper towel over and it had a whole bunch of sweet sorbet ink on it because I was re-inking my pad earlier in this. <laughs> what I used the... Uh, the uh, pen that I used to spread the adhesive or the ink around, I uh, used that paper towel to wipe it off. So glad I didn't get that all over our uh, bridge. All right. There we go. And then we can put our sentiment inside our card. It's so adorable. It can stand up. Like so. I'm going to have to, whoops, we need to do a little more creasing here. Let's get a little sharper crease here so that we can see if it will stand up for us. There we go. And then we can flip it onto the inside. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And here's where we can do our inside message. Now for our inside message, we can, you know, stamp whatever we want. We actually could put a different piece of designer series paper in here. Um, we could have, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's look. What could we have on the inside? We could have um, clouds and we could have another little critter on the inside. We could have this, this rainy, uh, this kind of darker rainy pattern here. Um, 
lots of options. We can have some happy uh, flowers um, on the inside so that the rain is all over. I kind of like that. <gasps> I kind of like that. We could put uh, some cute critter on the inside. These could just be die cut with any circle shape or a uh, punch. So many fun options, everyone. So Susan, Sue Stamfield, what are the dimensions of the side designer series paper? Uh, good question. One inch by four. Thank you for, thank you, Susan, um, for answering that question. One inch by four, both on the inside and on the front. And then the center panel was two and three quarters by four. And then the acetate or the window sheet piece I did here was a one by four piece. So exactly the same as the sides. Um, on the um, project sheet that I had from this card, the Merci card, uh, the acetate sheet was a little bit skinnier. It was three fourths inch. So that that can vary in size. If you wanted it as tall as that bridge, I could have made it a little bit taller. Um, all right, so I've got an idea here. I'm gonna take this designer paper, actually checking to see if I have, oh, I don't know, hang on, hold the phone. Um, I thought I had a partial piece, but I don't know where it is. So that's okay, I can't find that one, but I found this one, found it. <laughs> So we're going to cut this at two and three quarters, two and three quarters, All right, and then I'm going to cut it into, um, let's see, this would be a four inch panel right here. And a four inch panel here. You should be able to get three four inch panels out of this 12 inch paper, right? I get an A for math today, right, Janine? <laughs> How does the white embossed sheet look inside? Half so can stamp first. Um, half so can stamp first. Sue, I think you're saying um, if we did the, the, embossed panel inside and only embossed half of it, then you could stamp or write your message. Absolutely. That would look cute. You also could um, stamp or write your message up here um, is kind of what I was thinking. So you could do the this one with the clouds and the flowers on the inside. Ah, I don't know if I like that. It's a little busy. I think I like it better plain, actually. I thought I would like it. And I'm like, oh, I like it better with the flowers. Still a little bit busy. Let's see what just the clouds. Oh, the clouds are nice. Okay, that's not busy. I like that. So this is the rain over here and the clouds have, it's all cleared up. So I don't know, so many choices, right? <laughs> so many choices. Oh, I, I get some, you could even put raindrops up here on top and then do your sentiment here. Um, rainy days are better with you. Uh, oh, happy day. So many choices on the inside of our card and I can't decide. So I tell you what, I'm going to finish this up um, after our video. Uh, if you are a member or if you uh, are over on Facebook in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group, by the way, anyone can join us over there. Just go to groups and Facebook, search Sue Stampfield, pop a request in, I'll add you to the group. Um, I will post the how I decide to finish the inside of this tomorrow um, so that you can see that. And then it will also go out when I send out that project sheet. I'm going to pop up those clouds are good, but how, oh, a kite. Oh, Fonda, I like the way you think. That's a good idea. Mm, a kite would be fun. You could do the clouds with a kite. You could do the clouds with a kite up here even. Oh my goodness. So many, so many fun options, right? I'm going to go ahead and share those dimensions for you. So I'm going to slide this up. I'm going to slide Sandy's adorable card here. Seriously, there were so many options that I could have done for this card. Another one that I almost did. Um, where to go? Where to go, Susan? 
Okay, so I told you that I'm working on the January Crafter Noon tutorial bundle. It is in process. My hope is to have it done uh, in a few days. I do spend a ton of time on these, you guys, a ton of time. Um, but I use the Share a Milkshake bundle, and oh my gosh, is it ever fun! Um, for the the Crafter Noon uh, fun fold for January was the pop and slide card. So it pops out, um, it slides, and then pops up. Super fun card. Um, I The tutorial is very detailed so that you have a picture tutorial and can walk you through. I've got the main one done and I'm just working on all of the others. So um, I, these products I think would be, have been really cute here too to do a, uh, a milkshake. I mean, just so many options, right? Why are you not sticking? Okay, hold on. We got a, <laughs> we got a fox problem here. I gotta push him down a little bit harder. I think I just tucked him in and never rubbed. So there we have our two different cards. Let me pop up those dimensions for you. Winnie the Pooh tried to be Winnie the Pooh did try to be a little black cloud to get some honey, but it did not go well for him. He got uh, ended up getting stung quite a bit, I believe. All right, so let's go through our dimensions here on that spanner panel card. So the card base is your standard five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. These are uh, North America cardstock sizes, by the way. Um, if you're in a different market, you want to adjust these for your market. But it's basically your normal half sheet of card. <laughs> and then uh, the spanner piece uh, is one by four. That's the, the window sheet piece here that we did. Sandy's one by four piece was white cardstock with a three fourths by four inch piece of designer series paper across it. Um, and then the card base, you cut it uh, at one and a quarter. And then at four and a quarter. So you line up the edge with uh, one and a quarter, slide it over, and then cut again at four and a quarter and stop when you hit that score line. Um, and that's, that's I, basically, I just put the, the main sizes there. You'll be able to figure out the designer paper from that, but just know these are one by four. This is two and three quarters by four. And the inside pieces are the same. Oh, I can't wait to, to decorate this. So many fun options. So I'll be sharing that on the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Um, oh, I promised that I would leave these alone and, and hold still so that you can now take a screenshot. So I'm not wiggling. It's really blurry again. Hmm. Is it blurry for anyone else? It's okay for me, but that doesn't really help you. So, um, so there are the uh, there are the dimensions and let me stop this. All right, we'll put that banner away. All right, let's flip this over here. I'm going to change cameras here. There we go. So thank you so much. Um, we have done. Uh, oh, I was going to show you and I didn't do it because I buried them. Mm. So we did, in the last video, we did Colette Thiesenvitz's um, pop-out stand-up card. We did ours with the Favored Flowers Designer Series paper. Um, and after the video, I did this shorter version that matches the, the dimensions that Colette had. Um, and this is when I posted the photo on our um so you can't feel Facebook group. So that was the one fold we did. And then the other one was this one, which I called the latching gatefold card, which was inspired by um, Michelle Carlson, one of my team members, and she was inspired by Brandy Cox. So uh, this one opens up like this. Where is it? Where is it? The latch opens here and then the gatefold portion opens up like that. And then our next one that we're going to do in our next video is this one, which is the easel fold card. This was done by uh, Stampfield Stars team member, Carol Rosengren. I can't even see your comments. And this one uh, is an easel card. So it stands up for display and stands like this. And she was inspired by uh, Angie Kennedy, Ju Angie Kennedy Judah uh, with this fun fold card. So we'll walk through this one in our next video. Again, I'm just going to remind you that if you would like project sheets for these, you can sign up for my free project sheets. Uh, right now, I've got a couple project sheets you'll get when you in your welcome letter when you join. So um, 
take care, everyone. Have a great night. I'm thirsty. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to go get some of my water. So see if I can find where I left that. Uh, Jennifer, thanks again for moderating tonight. Always appreciate your assistance. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And thank you for your creative uh, inspiration. I learned some fun new things. And you've given me some great uh, ideas on finishing this card. So thank you so much. Take care, everyone. We'll see you uh, next time, which will be Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, right back here in my messy stamp room. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.